Hi and welcome to your next lecture in computer science for everyone. So far we've talked about how to create our programs in terms of the programming language but we haven't talked about how these programs actually work or what are the steps necessary for these programs to perform the objective that they want to perform. And this is what an algorithm is. So algorithms are like recipes. They are the series of steps that make something happen. So, for example, if we wanted to make a um, ham and cheese sandwich, we would first put a, a slice of bread on, on a plate, then put ham on it, then put cheese on it, and then put bread again. Notice how the computer doesn't realize that you have to put bread twice, or you can't say put ham and cheese between two slices of bread and things like that. This is the most basic way to do it. Theoretically, you could still say, well, the computer doesn't know what put means, so we still have to program that. Um, but we could say that put just means print to the screen. So we'd print bread, then ham, then cheese, and then bread again, for example. You can nest the algorithms, just in case you wanted to make a breakfast, for example. You get water, get a sandwich, which would be bread, ham, cheese, then bread again, and then get some fruit, and that would be your breakfast. So as you can see, you can nest the algorithms, and when we're programming, you will be nesting lots of algorithms together. Actually, a program is an algorithm, just it's a very large and complex algorithm, depending on the size of your program, of course, that performs a given function. Let's calculate a an algorithm to find the remainder of a division. In a remainder of a division, we will need four integer variables, whole numbers. One of them is going to be the remainder that will store the result of the remainder of the division. Num1, which will be your first number. Num2 will be your second number. And division is going to be the value that stores uh, the value of the division between num1 and num2. So let's say that num1 is 10 and num2 is 3. If we divide 10 by 3, we get 3.33. Although, not quite, because we've agreed that our four variables are whole numbers. 3.33 is not a whole number. So, in order to store our value in our integer variable called division, we need to drop everything after the decimal point. 10 divided by 3 is just the value 3. Remember that in integer division, we don't round, down, or up. We just drop everything. If 10 divided by 3 was 3.99, the value in division would still be 3. So division now stores the value 3. So far we have this. Num1 is 10, num2 is 3, and the value of the division is 3 as well. And it's calculated by dividing 10 over 3 and storing it inside an integer variable. The value of the denominator, num2, multiplied by division, will give us an interesting number. Num2 by division is 3 times 3, which is 9. Num1 minus 9 gives us the remainder, which is 1. So this is our values. Num1 is 10, num2 is 3. Division is 10 divided by 3. And remainder is 10, take away 3 times 3. So our remainder of this division is 1. And this operation is so common that most programming languages have an operator to perform this calculation. You don't have to create this algorithm by yourself. Just like plus, minus, divide, and multiply, the percent sign operator, called the modulus operator, finds the remainder of a division. So this is so common that there was a need to implement it in programming languages. And this is why we have it today. So an overview of the algorithm. First, we find the integer division of the two numbers we are going to divide. 10 divided by 3 equals 3. Then we find a product of the denominator and the result. 3 times 3 is 9. We subtract this value from the numerator. 10 minus 9 equals 1. And this value is the remainder. So this is how we would describe our algorithm by words. Was this easy? I hope so. This is one of the simplest examples of an algorithm there is. There are many common algorithms in computer science, 
and to find out all sorts of things, for example, um, finding a path from one point to another, or to sort a list of numbers in ascending or descending order. But as I've said before, every program you make is an algorithm. Every program has an objective, and the way you achieve that objective, the steps you take, is the algorithm that is going to be your program. Inside your program, you might use an algorithm like the quicksort, or you might create your own algorithms. But everything you do is an algorithm. And as we will see in the next presentation, if you manage to think algorithmically, this is going to be really beneficial for your programming skills. So let's move on to the next lecture, and I'll see you then.